Hey guys, Robert and Ingrid here. We're both doing a bit of, no movie review, nothing like that. We're both here to talk about another video game article that we both had seen. Well, I seen first and I showed it to her that kind of ra got me the wrong way. And that was, it was, um, was it Kotaku or Polygon? It forget. was Kotaku. Kotaku's um, complaining about the bosses in Control. I have my own take, she has hers. Mine is, I personally thought the guy was coming up as a bit of a whiner, a little, like, going, uh, uh, it's one thing to want to complain about, oh, I have dreaded these bosses, and every time I look at the game, I didn't want to go back. I get that, but you don't write a whole article about this. That's something you would send to someone else, right? You know, you wouldn't just tell everyone, like, oh, this is my problem with the game. It's feels like you're trying to deter people from the game, that you were trying to tell the creators, who oh, we shouldn't be happy to deal with this. Hmm. Does that feel like that to you? It did sort of feel a little bit like they were talking about that one me meeting you were really dreading coming up at work. Exactly, but it felt like that's something you don't usually, you put it in an opinion piece or something like that. You don't make a whole article about it unless you're hoping that the developers are gonna listen to you, wouldn't you say? Hmm. I mean, you've dealt with it with Bloodborne and everything, those type of bosses, but that's for those type of games where you go in knowing it's going to be hard. Yeah, to be fair, we don't necessarily know how hard of a game Control is. I haven't played it yet. I do have it. I just haven't played it yet. And I'm interested in getting it, because, well, getting it but I'm going to kind of hold off until the developer is able to put in the performance patches that they said. It's but, get, but given how this is Remedy, they're definitely not going to be Bloodborne or Dark Souls level type of bosses. I can assure you on that. Especially from what I understand, from what the article shows, the boss was more of a tutorial boss, and the guy, yeah. and the way the guy was going on saying, "Oh, it TGC goes down, and I lost because I, I was careless." That's any video game type of playing. That's what it felt like. It felt like this guy didn't want to actually play a game. He just wanted him to go on default mode and just write about the story. Hmm. Which, to be fair, something just dawned on me. This literally just dawned on me. Have you ever noticed that these woke people who ever complain about games are only focusing on the story? They almost never focus on the gameplay unless it fits their thing. But and even then, they complain about it, even though it makes sense from a gameplay point of view. But if you always know, they're always focusing on the story. Story only. Which makes me feel bad because I'm a story only kind of a guy when I play video games. Story is what I'm into. It. That's why I'll put up with games that have crappy storytelling to, you know, um, to you know, put up with it so if it's going to tell a good story still. Mm -hmm. Even if I have to get a cheat trainer to get past a broken game because the boss battle was cheating. A cheating bastard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played games like that. Like, Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days was basically definitely not the most stellar gameplay wise, but definitely had a really good story. So I can completely understand coming from it that way. From that way, yeah. But that's where I'm at. These people feel like, though, they don't even want to put in the effort. I will at least put the effort into the game, you know, even mm -hmm. going through the story mode. I might have to be like, oh, this is a slog, but the story makes it worth it. I don't sit around being like, oh, I wish it was like a cakewalk and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and yes, there's some things that have like a story mode, you know, or story difficulty, you know, mm -hmm. if you just want to focus on the story. That's easy mode. If they're on easy mode and they're still having trouble, I'm sorry, that's on them. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Like, if they're playing on the hardest difficulty, that's their stupidity. But if they can't do anything good on the easiest difficulty, again, that's on them. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, it's like, let's say, if let's say this guy, for the sake of argument, this guy was saying the same thing, except he was complaining about the first boss in Kingdom Hearts 3. Hmm. You know, like, he just couldn't get through it, and he, he did the exact same stuff of saying, like, oh, I figured out, you know, going through and I figured out their weak points. Like, you're supposed to do in any good boss battle. Mm -hmm. And then he complained about how, oh, it's so this and that. And then he just refused to look at it. Would you feel still like the cake up, a case of like, dude, what are you talking about? Hmm. Would you? Again, just roles change if the role, if the game was changed. Hmm. If we're just talking about the pure tutorial boss, the only time I heard people having trouble with it was on critical mode, which is where they were intentionally trying to do more of a wake-up call. But yeah, right. Ba base level, like standard difficulty in Kingdom Hearts 3 got complained about for being too easy. Exactly. I'm just saying, but if it was something like this, I'm not, and again, we haven't played Control, so maybe it's a bad comparison. But let's just say for the sake of argument, that'll be another case of like, dude, really? If he had the exact same, because I think what he complained about 
would apply to any boss battle, regardless of what the game is. Yeah, because yep. everyone, no matter who you are, is always going to have that one, one boss, boss that really trips them up for whatever reason, even if everyone else finds it easy. I know, but when I can sympathize with that, but it's like... But when it's that early in the game, though, it's like it was like the first boss, I think, he yeah. was talking about. That's where you're like, dude, almost first bosses are almost always tutorial bosses. If he's <laughs> complaining about a tutorial boss... You know what I'm saying, right? It's like, yeah. It's like you're not even gonna make it in the game then if you can't get past the tutorial boss. Mhm. Mm Again, look, it just feels like it, this should not have been an article. It's Kotaku, though. What do you expect, right? Mm -hmm. Just like when we complained about the other article, the Polygon article. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's like these people just—it's it, gonna be coming out more and more. These people do it. They don't care about their subjects. It be it a sports website or whatever. They don't care about it. They just care about the politics and the outrage because why it draws the clicks hmm. and if you ask me that's just stupid it, it, when you have to get this asinine i think it's, you know to describe it you know like you get this bad you know laughable hmm. i'm sorry you got to then come either put more thought into your articles or whatnot would you agree with that like this was this did not deserve to be an article yeah, it kind of felt like it was supposed to have been something like a letter to the editor, except it was an actual staff member that was writing it. Exactly, and it's like, again, it, it felt like it was an opinion piece, but instead it got made a main feature. It's like, no. And you get the thing about these sites, you know, like they're all opinion pieces, but they get treated as if they're front page news. Hmm. That's the problem with these sites. Wouldn't you agree with that? You know, like everything, even an opinion, is treated like the headline? Yeah. I mean, uh, but, in, but in, I can also say this. I gone through some, I always make sure I go through a game at least once. No cheats, no nothing, you know, and everything so I can experience the story. Anytime I replay it, I am then willing to, it's like fair game, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, but, and, but even I've had my own fair shares of like, ugh, I'm, like, it almost takes away the enjoyment of it, but, I still push through because I know I'm going to like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, have you ever had a game like that? Not counting any blood, Dark Soul like games. Not well, counting any of those. I but think again, it's pretty good. I think I'm going to go back to the example of 358 over two days because there were two bosses in that game that were basically notoriously bad. One of them was the Leech Grave where you kind of had to destroy all of these tentacle things oh, to geez. then get to the center of a coffin-like thing, which you have to get in a few hits there. And, and if I remember right, you then have to get the hell out of there or get one-shotted by some kind or close to one-shotted oh, by one an Oh, one of AOE. those things. Where and the... then there's another one, the Roller of the Sky, where it was just like, you had to fly and the controls were really bad and you had to, like, maybe a few opportunities to strike at the boss's weak point. Uh, one, like, of the, one of those things where it's like, the pattern is obvious, but either it gives you a small window or, like you said, it makes it so painful or, like, you gotta hurry, and it basically it, they almost like stretch out the difficult, the length of the battle by all those factors. Would you say? Yeah, something that's a little bit more artificial because I'm not gonna pretend like every boss battle is going to be a good thing, and sometimes oh, no. you will definitely dread it. But usually that doesn't happen very early on in the game unless it's a special case. It, well, especially if it's a case where you're supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. We you know one of those boss battles where you're supposed to lose, or. Unless you've already played through the game already and you've mastered everything. Because there are some boss battles like that where you could actually win and get a bonus perk or something because you're actually able to show you mastered everything. Mm -hmm. But in other cases where it's like, nope, you're supposed to lose because it's supposed to be that incredibly difficult for the sake of the story. Mm -hmm. But again, but I'll say this though. It's like, again, just you read this stuff. And again, it just makes me groan at how many of these people who do these articles feel entitled that they have a game custom designed for them like oh all my friends are playing this i want to play it too i'm not great of that great of a gamer so it should be able to be appeal to my playability it's like why it's like that again that one article about bloodborne remember that the easy boat and all that well that like, was more sec sekiro so sekiro, that was sekiro, kind sekiro, of sekiro, sekiro but it's still okay. same thing though same thing of like oh i want to join in with all my friends because they're playing it but it's your not, not your type of game. That would be like me saying, oh, I have all these guy friends who are playing a sports game. Why can't it be a run and gun shooter? <laughs> Defeating the point. 
Yeah, now if something like this had been like a friend in my DMs going, I am really, really dreading doing this, then I would be a whole lot more sympathetic and I would be ready to offer hints, strategies, or if they sort of reach the point where I'm done with this and not having fun with this anymore, might even offer a cheese tactic or try and search one out. Right. Out. Like, I can completely understand that. I've reached that point in games at times, which is a little different when you're actually publishing it on a website. But that's the other thing. If the guy had paid for this game, he had had every right to complain. You know, if you paid for it and it was that difficult. But this felt like the way this is was this was given, like, he was given a review copy, it looks like. My guess is. Mm -hmm. And given chances are with this website, that's probably what it was a review copy. You know what I mean? And so if, that was, if that's the case, he had absolutely no right to complain then because he was given it. Mm -hmm. Which, obviously, again, that's what so many these people seem to take these jobs for. So they can get these review copies, just play these games, because I think that's what they're so used to is, oh, I'm getting paid to play games. Yeah, but are you ready now? And not everyone is as good at every type of game out mm -hmm. there. I mean, there's, you, you want to know, there's so many games I've wanted to play, but even I look at them like, no not my type of thing or like oh no i'm gonna get my ass whooped like or i want it's to just like you know what i probably could play this bit game but i couldn't necessarily really get into like the particular like feel of the game well yeah. enough to enjoy it as intended like one time i had the time with that is the legacy of kane series where oh yeah I love is really fascinating but i just don't think i could really get into the the head of the specific kind of brutality that the, you're supposed to really have with the characters in the game, and I feel like I just wouldn't be able to play it with that particular way, even if the, the difficulty isn't even an issue. Exactly, or in my case, I, I, as much as I really am interested in Dark Souls or Bloodborne or all those games, I'm never going to play them. Not mm -hmm. my type of thing, because I do not like those type of games where the lore is like everything I, I do not i'll be honest i do not like those games where the gameplay is purely what's about and the story is so minimal like it's incredible lore but it's not part of the main game but you have to go search it out that i'm not a fan of you know what i mean and the thing is is that i can have the thing is is that i can compare it to places that do it so much better like one's a state one channel i discovered that i genuinely love is playstation X access where they're per, where they sort of like are more tongue-in-cheek about the fact i'm bad at certain games mm -hmm. and it's like i keep telling myself that i'm going to play these on my new year's resolution but it comes off more as just kind of like genuine and relatable because of like the context exactly. is like yeah they just just a whole lot better exactly but but you get what i'm saying though right it's like uh -huh. it's not it's more i'm more talking about the type of like games like everyone's playing it everyone's talking about it I want to get involved, but then I look at it and it's just like, I'm willing to accept it's not for me. You know what I mean? Even by looking at it, or if I might, if there's a demo, I might play a little bit of it, or I might download it a little and try it out just to give it a try. And if it's like, not my thing, gone. Not going to buy it. Not my interest. I'm willing to acknowledge that. This feels like a guy who doesn't want to acknowledge that. You know, that article. It's like a bunch, it's like you're going into college and you pick a major because a bunch of your friends happen to be picking that even major. Even though it's not your interest. Even if it's not your interest. And then just finding the classes to be a horrible slog. Like trying to be a doctor or something, or a computer engineer and yet you're a sports guy. It's like, bad idea, what the hell were you thinking? Hmm. Again, I think that's what a lot of these issues is, is that it's, it's a better example. And I'm gonna, we're, we're going to wrap up on this one. Yeah. Is, it's like those who got into video games thinks they're gone home and they want every game to be like a gone home. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's like that type of thing, which unfortunately, like, that's what a lot of these type of people who are in game journalists are like. They want everything to be like a gone home because that's what got them in. That's their style. Hmm. You want that? Go play um, one of those, like uh, Detroit Become Human or something. Those more narrative driven ones where they're more narrative dominant. Do that. But again, it's only section Sekiro to be a gone home, for example. Hmm. You get what I'm saying, right? That's what feels, and would you say that's kind of what some of, not all, but when you look at other articles, that's what it kind of feels like these people are wanting. Or it's just like, I really wanted to go into journalism for film or TV or whatnot, but it's already really competitive, so I decided to hop into this new medium just because it was the one place I could really get in. Oh, let's give it more snarky. I wanted to push my own viewpoints on all these things, so I'm just getting to this website just so I can have something to spout about. Mm. If we want to get really snarky about it. Mm. Uh, any final words you want to give on this article? Mm. 
I will say that it's not nearly as bad as some other stuff, and this, and this particular writer seems to at least be a bit more self-aware about the whole thing, but yeah, I just don't understand how this even got published in the first place. Aside from it being Kotaku, of course. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that, and well, just felt like we needed to say something about it, because this was one of those articles where I just read it, and I'm just like, Ugh. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At the end at all. So, I'll get to a review eventually, but until that point, I want to thank Ingrid for joining me up on our during our lunch break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'll and catch you all later. This is Robert, and this is Ingrid. I'll see you. We'll see you all later.